Welcome back for another video. Today's video will be with the State Street Locos Gang. The State Street Locos Gang is located in the State Park area of Boyle Heights. Before, they used to be referred to as the State Boys. Now, they're referred to as the Locos. The State Street Locos Gang territory includes Cesar Chavez south of the 10 Freeway, north of the State Street to the west, and Soto Street to the east. Rival gangs that State Street Locos beef and go at it with include the Cam Gang, Tiny Boys, Braid Street, as well as Primera Flats. On the night of July 5th, 2009, Sandra, the mother of Sammy and common law wife of Jose Hernandez's brother, went to a bar with Juanita Lopez, who was a former sexual partner of Jose Hernandez. Sandra and five of her children lived in Juanita's house, which was in State Street territory. Juanita met Alcazar at the bar. Alcazar, nicknamed Green Eyes, was a tattoo-bearing member of the Tiny Boys gang, which is an enemy to the State Street. Juanita brought Robert Alcazar home in the early morning hours of July 6th to smoke meth and have sex in her bedroom. Sandra smoked with them briefly and then left them alone in the bedroom. The three of them went out onto the porch, but Juanita sent Robert Alcazar back in because she realized his tattoos were visible to people on the street and that could bring trouble because this was State Street territory. Sandra called Yvonne's cell phone, which Jose used as his phone, and told him to come over. Jose arrived carrying a gun and went to Juanita's bedroom where he saw Juanita and Alcazar having sex. Pointing the gun at Alcazar and Juanita, Jose told Juanita, I told you he was going to go down and left the room. Jose returned, saw Juanita and Alcazar having sex again, pointed the gun and told Juanita to leave. Alcazar did not have a gun. Juanita left. Jose asked Alcazar where he was from, to which Alcazar replied, nowhere. Jose told Alcazar he was lying and shot him, firing three times from a distance of at least two feet. Jose left the premises with Sandra's children in tow, warning Juanita, if you call the police, I'm going to kill you and your family. As Alcazar lay dying in the bedroom floor of a gunshot wound to the chest, Sandra told Juanita not to call an ambulance or the police because Jose had two bullets left in the gun and could return. Sandra staged the room to look as though a burglary had taken place and packed up everything connected to Alcazar. She and Juanita left the house and disposed of Alcazar's possessions. After concocting a story to tell the police to hide the identity of the killer, Sandra reported the shooting to the police. Jose bragged about the shooting in text messages afterward. Alcazar ingested enough meth on the night of the killing to be under the influence. Jose Hernandez from State Street was found guilty of first-degree murder of Roberto Alcazar, who was from Tiny Boys. Jose was sentenced to 50 years to life in state prison. LAPD officers Benjamin Aguilera and Cesar Wences were working for the Vice Unit on September 27, 2011. They wore plain clothes and rode in a late model rented black Camaro. Wences was driving and Aguilera sat in the front passenger seat. They were driving northbound on Soto Street, north of Cesar Chavez Avenue, a known gang area. When they heard someone yelling from the west sidewalk or a front porch by the sidewalk, they saw a man whom they identified as a man by the last name of Robles looking at them and yelling while gesturing with his hands. They could not make out the words spoken or the gestures, but Wences perceived the gestures to be gang signs. Wences saw approximately four males standing on the porch. He saw Robles step onto the sidewalk while reaching toward the rear waistband. Robles then walking northbound on the sidewalk in the same direction as the moving car. Ibarra followed behind him. Wences turned left from Soto Street to Sheridan Street and drove slowly westbound on Sheridan Street. Robles and Ibarra followed briskly on foot and crossed over to the north side of Sheridan Street. Aguilera saw that Robles was carrying a handgun in his right hand and formed his partner 
and broadcast a call for help on its police radio, noticing where Aguilar's car was being interrupted by other transmissions. Wences pressed the help button on his own police radio to override the other calls, reporting a man with a gun and requested backup. Wences then saw Robles enter the front passenger side of a silver car behind the Camaro facing west on Sheridan Street. Aguilera saw both men enter the silver car. The silver car accelerated, as did Wences. Wences drove around 40 to 50 miles per hour. The silver car was around 500 feet behind the Camaro. Wences sought to maintain a safe distance between the two vehicles while continuing to monitor the suspect's location so as to assist the officers responding to his call. Following a jog in the road, he turned right onto St. Louis Street and then left back on Sheridan Street. The officers continued westbound on Sheridan Street to its terminus at State Street and turned left onto State Street. As he turned onto State Street, Wences saw the silver car turning left from St. Louis Street onto Sheridan Street. Wences pulled over to the shoulder of State Street near a freeway overpass to see whether the silver car would continue to follow them. After a short time, the silver car turned left onto State Street. Wences sped away with the silver car in pursuit. Wences drove south on State Street to Cesar Chavez Avenue where he stopped at a red light and then ran the red light as a silver car continued approaching. As Wences continued driving south onto State Street, the silver car turned right onto Cesar Chavez Avenue, traveling west. Wences then made a U-turn, so the Camaro was facing north on State Street, south of Cesar Chavez Avenue. As he completed the U-turn, the two officers saw the silver car turn right onto State Street from Cesar Chavez Avenue. The two cars were now facing each other, and were only about 60 feet apart with no outlet between them. Wences almost came to a stop momentarily and then unholstered his handgun and drove forward. Aguilera also unholstered his handgun and held it by his leg. Wences saw Robles lean in front of the driver and point a gun in his right hand out the driver's side window and toward the officers while the driver leaned back in the driver's seat. The two cars were only 10 to 15 feet apart this time. Aguilera also saw the front passenger holding a gun in his right hand, extending his right arm out the driver's side window. The officer saw a muzzle flash and heard a shot. Aguilera ducked down by the dashboard while Wences, holding a gun in his right hand and extending the gun out the driver's side window, fired three shots toward the silver car. Wences could not recall who fired first, but Aguilera testified that he heard the first shot from the silver car. The two cars drove past each other, traveling in opposite directions. The silver car continued traveling southbound on State Street. Wences made a U-turn and saw the silver car turn left onto Michigan Avenue. Wences also turned from State Street left onto Michigan Avenue and saw the silver car turn right at the next street. The first marked patrol car arrived soon afterwards. The silver car stopped shortly after turning right. Robles and Ibarra ran from the car. Ibarra was holding a handgun in his right hand pointed toward the ground. Police and a marked patrol car drove toward the two suspects who ran down the driveway of an apartment complex. Officers drew their guns and shot at the gang members, but they kept running. The officers set up a perimeter and waited for other officers to arrive. Officers saw the men standing next to a garage. He ordered them out toward the front and with the assistance of other officers, arrested them. Meanwhile, the silver car fled the scene. Officers later pursued the car and arrested the driver, Alex Miranda. Both Armando Robles Jr. and Michael Anthony Abara were tried and convicted on two counts each of attempted murder. Robles was sentenced to two consecutive life terms, each with a minimum pro eligibility term of 15 years. Ibarra was sentenced to two consecutive life terms, each with also a minimum parole eligibility term of 15 years. In 2012, Frank Martinez, a 27-year-old State Street Locos gang member, was wanted in connection with the double murder when officers arrived at the La Mariata residence to serve a warrant. Martinez scrambled onto the roof of a nearby home. Three officers and an FBI agent fired after Martinez appeared to reach into his pocket. The officers also believed he fired at least one shot. 
Martinez was pronounced dead at the scene as news helicopters showed live video of him lying on the roof covered by a white sheet. In 2013, Jose Demon Chavez Jr., a State Street Locals gang member, was shot and killed by other fellow State Street Locals gang members in the 2000 block of Sheridan Street in Boyle Heights.